I don't have my normal light. I... All right. Well, let us start. So hello, everyone that is attending. We'll watch this on playback. Yes. Welcome to the Berlin Select Board meeting Tuesday, September 7th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Uh, we are still having a virtual meeting, no in-person attendance of uh, members of the public are permitted, but this information you can find on our webpage, our YouTube channel, and approved minutes will always go up to my town government. So we will call to order at 7.02. Uh, meetings of the Berlin Select Board are generally recorded for transmission on both the Berlin Cable Television Access Channel and YouTube. Your voice image and or telephone number may be recorded. All right, first order of business tonight is the approval of the minutes from August 23rd, 2021. Any questions, comments? Decent. I will reapprove. Um, okay. I'll second. I'll second that. Um, Mary. Mary. Yeah. Okay. There you are. Um, <laughs> I lost my title, clerk. Oh. <laughs> are you just Chris? <laughs> yeah. I, it says. Any, it says. It says Margaret's clerk. Thanks, clerk. I mean. Any Sorry, random, so any any random person off the street will do. There you go. Not that I care. Not <laughs> that I care. That was the only thing I could find. <laughs> All right. So once we give Chris back her title, um, we got a motion and a second. Um, no other discussion. Stone eye. Larkin's eye. Keith eye. There you go. All righty. Margaret, lovely to see you. Uh, any correspondence that we need to chat about? Lovely to see you too. And the only correspondence that I have uh, that I've made note of for tonight is the um, Mass Housing's final report. It's the um, final report of the cost examination for the Green Acres development. No comments were submitted from the town, nor would the select board be in a position to actually analyze the costs itself. However, I have forwarded um, the report from Mass Housing to our affordable housing consultants and to the assessor's office for their information. You also have um, the latest um, subsidized housing inventory. I put that in your correspondence folder because it kind of goes with this. And uh, those numbers appear to reflect accurately and our housing affordable housing consultants also have that. Okay. Um... There's two other items in the correspondence folder. Do we want to talk about them now or talk about them under old or new business? One's I'm sorry, Mabel, what are they? Mabel Felton. Um, oh, that's under correspondence? Okay. And, sorry. And, and appoint and confirm um, Holly from conservation to... Okay. I suggest that we hold off on Holly until we do AJ's appointment. So that's coming up soon. Yep. But Mabel, yes, the Mabel Marble... Felton uh, scholarship. Um, so after some back and forth last week in emails, um, we um, we have a kind of a unique issue um, with um, an applicant, um, an awardee actually, uh, of a scholarship, and um, uh, we understand that the the award criteria was set by the benefactors. So rather than the select board. Um, actually just voting <clears throat> to uh, modify the selection criteria, I'm sorry, the award criteria. Um, I have recommended that the select board send a letter to the benefactors um, asking for permission to do so in this one instance. And I so saw the letter, have, have we heard back? I saw the letter that Mary sent out. Um, it's dated today. So it okay. would be for the board's approval today. Mary, are you waiting? Are you, are you looking for the board approval? Okay. Okay. Is there any um, any discussion? Further discussion on this? No. You want me? To, I'll make a motion to approve the letter to be sent. Second. All right. So uh, I'll start the <clears throat> vote. Stone eye. Hawkins eye. Keith eye. Awesome. Thank you, Mary, for putting that together, and we'll just wait to uh, hear back. All right, so let's see, uh, have a few minutes before police report. So are there any comments from the general public? I see that we have six folks uh, in our audience tonight. Okay, all right, not seeing any, thank you. Um, 
Do we want to? So is Eric here on behalf of Chief Galvin, or are we waiting for Chief Galvin? Um, or is Eric just here because he wants to be? He is here for Chief Galvin. Oh. Eric, if you're on, if you want to open up your mic. All right, can you hear me now? There we go. Look at him. He's looking all official. Hey, Eric, how are you? Welcome. Yeah, are you? All right. So uh, the month of August, the department handled 930 calls for service, um, including six cases that were criminal charges, 19 that were motor vehicle crashes, 187 motor vehicle stops with 178 citations that were issued. Um, during the month of August, uh, on 17th and 18th of August, uh, Chief Galvin, Sergeant Gilchrist, myself attended the Central Mass Chiefs of Police Association Summer Conference. Uh, training included status updates on police reform. Um, even though we sat through almost three hours of lectures, uh, we still have more questions than we do answers on the whole police reform aspect and uh, where we're going from here. Um, the best part of the day was our training on police resiliency, um, where we actually sat through an hour and a half lecture on um, helping control burnout, emotional struggles, improving coping skills, reducing stress, uh, enhancing well-being, and adapting to change. Uh, that was definitely the highlight of the uh, training seminar. Um, I was actually supposed to go to a four-day training back in July, but I had to, or sorry, June, but I ended up having to go to a civil rights training class uh, instead to maintain my status as a civil rights officer for the town. Um, the major incident for August was on the 29th. We responded to Linden Street uh, for reported man traps um, in a piece of industrial equipment uh, with the assistance obviously of the fire department and rescue squad were able to free the victim. Um, and from there, he was life lighted to UMass Worcester and we're here, he's in pretty good condition now. Um, at the springtime meeting, the town approved $12,000 for a purchase of portable radar signs. Um, with the assistance of the Traffic Safety Advisory Committee, four signs were ordered. Uh, we have not got a date on when the delivery is going to be ordered. Uh, they're the speed limit signs um, that are solar operated. Um, obviously, we know that uh, the severe weather was supposed to impact us during Hurricane Henri. Uh, additional staff was scheduled, but fortunately, we were able to cancel this. Um, additional staff and maintain normal levels throughout the storm. Uh, so we didn't incur any additional costs uh, for the storm. Um, Eric, I have a question. I don't know if you can answer it or not. Do you have any status and Margaret, this may, um, you may need to help too, is um, the blinky pedestrian signs, they're still blinking. Um, they're not activated yet. Do we know when that might change? We actually, oh, Eric, you want to? No, no, go, go ahead. That's not part okay. of my notes, so go ahead. Okay. We actually have the new button activated pedestrian uh, flashing beacons, but we do need highways help oh. to put them up. So we're, um, we're being patient and, mm -hmm. and uh, letting highway uh, stay up to date on their highest priority tasks while we, while we await that project. Okay. Um, Scott, Chris, any questions? I have another one, but I don't, I don't want to hog. So what, what is the, they, they said body cameras implemented. Uh, has, yeah, how has that yeah. gone? What is about yeah, the reception sorry, yeah, from yeah, officers in the public? This. Yeah. The body cameras were implemented. See, we got them. We got all <laughs> them. Um, we started those, uh, we, we, uh, started those a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, great success. Um, you know, I personally had an incident the other night and, uh, it's fantastic having it. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely a great tool for us. Um, you know, and I think it's just going to be an absolute advantage for us to have them. So, uh, Scott stole my question. Um, so, I mean, Eric, are they on all the time or do you like activate them during a No, As soon as we get a call, we or... activate them. Okay. Yeah. So they're, they're like, like right now it's not on, but if I got a call and was walking out of the station, I activate it. Okay. And it's just like the, the touch of a button and on they go. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually harder to shut them off. It's easy to turn them on. It's really just touch the button to turn it on, but to shut them off, you have to hold it for like five seconds in order to shut it off. So 
they they come on they come on real easy and they're a lot harder to turn off. <laughs> any it, feedback um, from the public? I mean, I don't know if anyone is like seen you or any other officer in the general store or around town and noticed. No, I, I mean, it just, you, know, you know, people do mention they they do notice that we're wearing cameras. Um, nothing negative, nothing positive, just kind of neutral conversations. Okay. Did we get out any any press release about that we're moved we moved to body cameras? Uh, you know, I don't believe there was any press release put out yet. Um, I'm sure after tonight, we will probably uh, put something out on Facebook. I think it's also a great thing to put in the item as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Eric, if you want to write something up and send it, then I can always get it over to um, Jan and she can drop it in, drop it in the item. Uh, probably, see, today's already Tuesday, so probably next week. Okay. All right. Um, one more thing, the grave markers have uh, have been ordered and are pending delivery. That's awesome. Thank you. Very much appreciate you doing that. I'm sure the families of uh, those officers uh, thank you as well. Um, Madam Chair, may I share my screen for a minute? I want to show folks the um, the speed radar signs that were ordered. Absolutely. Okay. This is what they look like. I'm sorry, it's not a great picture, but if you can see that the um, the sign says slow down when people are going too fast. When people are going under the speed limit, it says thank you. And it does collect some um, vehicle data. It's not, um, it's not an extensive amount of data, but it does collect um, traffic volume and speed data from what I understand. So um, these are the signs that were um, that town meeting appropriated funds for. Um, we're gonna be getting four of them to be placed around town. They're easily movable and um, it's going to help uh, the police department and hopefully mitigate some issues with traffic speeds in town. Do we have an option to change the wording? Cause I'm thinking like if you, if you go over 10 miles, you know, 10 miles over, it comes up. Are you kidding me? You know, just <laughs> I, 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 that probably would have been in a different uh, price category. <laughs> Saying, you know, Dave never just gave me to access. Show those. Right, Dave never gave me access to the blinky sign because I think he was afraid of what I'd write. So this probably goes through with um, the the uh, speed signs. Okay. All right. Well, thank well, you, Sergeant. I, I, there's one more thing. Uh, I know you guys have a packet. Mm -hmm. uh, Chief said he gave you the um, the traffic safety advisory committee came up with possible parking regulations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as well for uh, the truck exclusions on certain roads in town. It, it's uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if you got a chance to review those or not. So these, yeah, these are draft parking uh, regulations. Um, it's the select board that is actually responsible for adopting the parking regulations. So I think these, you know, over the next few weeks, um, next few meetings, you're gonna be seeing these over and over again until we can put some parking regulations uh, firmly in place. Now, the only thing I didn't see, and maybe because we can't, but I, like no overnight parking would be great. I don't know how you define overnight, but. Uh, I think it stops us from some of the things that were of concern well, where someone sort of, a, a band is not quite the word, but left a vehicle in the center of town for several days upon end at uh, one point. So, so Scott, we'll add that. And um, I would ask the select board to continue reviewing these and mm -hmm. provide your suggestions um, so we can, uh, okay. we can work on these and get them finalized yeah. in the not too distant future. Uh, other than, I mean, and that's minor. I would have had no problem approving even without that. Okay. But that's one of those things. And and I had some nitpicky things about whether or not Group A should be Group A one and A two because some of those are a little in my universe a little bit more severe than others, but not enough again to stop this from going through. I think that it is good enough as it is, and I think it through its implementation we'll make adjustments as we find things that are not enough of a deterrent. Yeah, I like them. Um, uh, Eric, probably too, when you're doing the write-up for the, uh, the body cameras, maybe start thinking something about this so that, you know, there's information that we can get out to the public that these things are coming so you can avoid that. Well, I, I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to park on a street near a fire hydrant, you know, type of 
Um, <laughs> well, we don't have any fire. You know what? That's I hear it all the time from my employees. Oh, I never knew that. So there you go. Get it Actually, several of the developments in town do have fire hydrants. The town doesn't own any, but several of our developments do. And right. maybe it helps make sure those don't get blocked. Okay. No, these right. look these look good. Anything else there, Sergeant Shatner? No, no, no I, I think I uh, covered it all. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much Great. for coming. Thanks for attending. Appreciate all it. All right. Thank you. Yep. Take care. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Stay Sergeant. Bye. Bye, Eric. All right. All right. So we have a bit of time before Victoria comes on up. Um, Do you have anything um, about the highway department? Yeah. I mean, Margaret, did you get any? Right yeah, we have a highway department report here. Yep. And because okay. it's not my report, I will read it. Um, highway department continues to mow all the lawns and fields uh, due to the wet season they're having. So between raindrops, they're mowing a lot. Um, and Jim and Fred have been assuming um, most of the superintendent's responsibilities until a replacement is hired. We thank Amy Grenier once again for uh, stepping up and providing some extra hours to help um, with highway administration. Um, they have been researching different ways to fund the, oh, they were, I guess they did, research different ways to fund transmission replacement um, on the 2008 loader. And as you know, it was, uh, it was jointly uh, voted by um, capital, it was a capital finance and select board uh, to take 50% from uh, snow and ice and 50% from highway expense, understanding that later in the fiscal year it may require a request for a reserve fund transfer. So the good news is that the loader is actually in a garage bay at the service center. They have the transmission there and they're starting to work on it now. So the sooner we get that loader back and it's operational, the sooner we can dispose of the surplus uh, 2002 loader. Um, let's see. Repair of mowers are routine uh, and routine maintenance is ongoing. Um, they were thankful to MassDOT for receiving approximately 2000 yards of asphalt millings from the 495 repaving project. Uh, the highway department tends to use a lot of these around town for washouts, road edges, parking areas, et cetera. Um, public safety building parking lot was reclaimed, regraded and repaved and restriped by no cell of paving. Um, and the search continues for a new superintendent and facilities director um, on at the very end of August, uh, August 30th, one of the newer highway department employees gave a two week notice. Um, so that job, and I'll touch on that in my TA report, um, that is another position we are having to advertise for. So thank you to Jim and uh, Fred for, oops, Jim submitted this. Thank you very much for submitting this, Fred. Uh, Jen, Jim. Jim Fred. <laughs> Jim Fred. We need to combine their names. They're doing a good job. <laughs> there you go. No, absolutely appreciate everything that that department is doing, being short staffed and taking care of the town. So um, thank you for that. And thank you to Amy for putting in those extra hours. I'm sure it takes a boatload of work off of them. All right. Um, Margaret, do you want to start to go through your abbreviated version of your TA report while we have? Um, 10 minutes? Sure, I just had to find it. <laughs> there it is. Okay, um, on the TA report this week, I thought I'd give you new COVID uh, numbers, COVID vaccine numbers and report that 11 new cases um, um, have, been, um, uh, have been determined in the last two weeks. So we're not out of the woods yet, um, but I thank um, the Board of Health for providing this information on a weekly basis now. Um, Employee resignations, we just touched on this. Um, we do have a list at the moment of um, resignations, existing vacancies and pending vacancies. Um, we did receive Chief Galvin's a notice of resignation uh, that was submitted on August 30th. You, uh, the personnel committee has approved the job ad and the job description. Job description is before the select board tonight for uh, approval. Once that's done, we're going to get it posted immediately for 10 days simultaneously in-house and externally. Highway Department Labor Driver, um, we just mentioned that Mike uh, gave his notice of resignation. Uh, 
on, on August 30th as well. Um, that is po being posted imminently on the town's website, Facebook, indeed.com and uh, the veterans job posting site. Uh, same thing with winter driver laborers. That job has been advertised for a while now, um, and we only have one application in to date. Um, so the select board is going to be voting that job description tonight as well. Um, we'll update that on our website and Facebook and put it on Indeed.com in the veterans job posting site. Highway Superintendent Facilities Director. Um, I know that there's going to be discussion later on today about um, staffing needs, vacancies, um, uh, long-term strategies, and things like that. Um, I do note in my TA report that a discussion on a long-term interim uh, may be needed because it, it might not be, um, I think we've found uh, that it's not uh, very easy in this municipal employee market, especially um, with Department of Public Works to, uh, to find employees. Uh, 1870 town hall manager job remains vacant. Um, right now, the building is very, very slow. So I've taken on a little bit of that work um, just to, to backfill. I, it's not advisable at this time to hire an 1870 town hall manager when the building um, is so, so lightly used. And then lastly, the temporary conservation agent that has been posted for a while. Board approved the job description um, a few weeks ago and uh, due to, a, well, we have not received any applications for that position yet. Um, but I, I note in my TA report, there's a very high demand for conservation agents across the state at this moment. So um, we either compete with the other towns or we find partners and I'm trying very hard to reach out um, um, to uh, potential partners on that. Uh, COVID-19 funding and expense reporting. Um, just I just submitted the quarter four COVID spending report last week. Uh, thank you to Amy for putting together um, the invoice information on the spreadsheet. So that's done. Um, our uh, ARPA uh, lost general revenues. I think I've mentioned this to the board, you know, the, the definition of general revenues based on our recap sheet. So actual numbers, um, it appears that the preliminary estimate um, of lost revenues between FY19 and FY20 would be 163,000. That does not include real estate and personal property taxes, um, nor does it include, um, no, it doesn't include real estate and personal property taxes, does include uh, meals and rooms. The uh, parking lot, as you know, is done. They did a great job, um, came in well under budget. Uh, we had $230,000 in budgeted funds, including the $100,000 housing choice grant. The actual cost is approximately $145,000 all inclusive. So um, many thanks to Nocella, to Keith Clemmer, to Paul McKelk, and to our highway department. Um, everybody helped um, help, help this project along, and to conservation, everybody helped this project along. So thank you. Bullet House Weatherization Project. I just got notice that that uh, project has been completed um, within the budget, actually with the older um, estimated numbers. So no, um, no escalators for materials costs. The sill work project was uh, set out, sent out for procurement. We had an RFQ out there. Um, it was sent probably to a dozen uh, vendors. We received two quotes. Uh, the low quote was received from Cronenbergers and Sons of Middletown, Connecticut, um, in the amount of $19,960. So that would take care of the SIL project. Historicals meeting tomorrow morning uh, to, vote on, uh, to vote their recommendation on contract award. And then finally, uh, there's other information in my TA report. Um, Mary puts it up online, so feel free to, to look at that. Um, but my last uh, verbal report tonight uh, would be that we did in fact have a small group discussion with uh, representatives of 19 Carter and neighbors of 19 Carter regarding um, the neighbors concerns with the summer music series. Um, it, I think it was, I feel that it was a really good discussion. Uh, folks who attended um, said what was on their mind, they expressed their concerns, and then the discussion proceeded to ideas for future events, which is, which is what we wanted to hear um, so that we can, uh, we can help uh, create events that are, that are good and acceptable uh, to everyone in the future. So that's all I've got for tonight. 
Margaret, a quick question. I don't know if this goes in your report or later on, you can tell me to, to uh, put a put a plug in it and wait. But when you're out and the warrants need to be signed, I know that June had mentioned that perhaps the board talked about one person to come sign it in lieu of all three. Isn't that under new business? Is it? Dang. No, it's not. I thought it was penciled in there. Yeah. Um, the board can, um, it, according to the town accountant, the board can designate one of its members to sign warrants uh, in my absence. Um, typically, there's not a problem with that. But this um, this past week, um, I was a uh, well, not this past week, the week before, weeks, whenever yeah. it was. Yeah. Yep. Um, yes, it was one day. Um, it was one day late. Dennis still was able to process it and everything. But in my absence, the board can uh, vote a board member to sign in my absence. Can, can we do it when there's only three on our board? I know when I was on the school committee for with three of us, we couldn't do it. You couldn't designate one member to do it? I, right. I think it was, I don't know if it was Mass General Law or if it's changed. So, so or... that's, been, that's been my experience. And I talked with June about it. June said it would be okay. My experience has been that a quorum of the board sign in my absence. So whatever the board is comfortable with, um, as long as it can be signed and submitted um, on, a timely, on a timely basis. Yeah, I, I apologize. I was going to get in there to sign it the last time and I did not. Are we making I would any have progress? absolutely no. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, are we making any progress doing light warrants every other week instead of weekly? We're looking at it. We're looking at it for bills anyway. Okay, for bills and payroll, because the idea is mm. you can alternate between the two. Mm. Gives you more time, fewer checks. Yeah. Not half um, as many checks, because I get that you just postpone some. Yeah. But. Yeah. So I, if one can sign, I mean, I'm a hop, skip, and a jump. I usually whiz by the town hall, just about at town office every day. I don't have a problem, but if it, there needs to be a majority of us, uh, let me know. I'm okay either way. Let me um, let me talk with June again about that. I uh, I think my my personal preference would be that a quorum of the board uh, do it. Um, but I but let me talk with June again. I, it's going to be uh, you know. Okay. What she's comfortable with is going to is going to matter. So, all right, awesome. Thank you, Miss Margaret. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right, it is seven twenty nine. Can you please bring Ms. Victoria up to the front? Meeting Victoria Flynn. Victoria Flynn to the principal's office. <laughs> <laughs> there I she wish. is. She's on a beach. Yeah, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, Victoria? Nice to see you. Good. Hi, everybody. How are you all? Good. Good. Long time no see. Too long, yes. Yeah. All right. So, so if you just want to jump in and then we'll follow along and ask questions as we go. All right. Sounds good. All right. Hold on just a second. Oh, Mary's going to share the screen. Thank you, Mary. All right. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so today's presentation is looking to expand Council on Aging Services and Director Roles. All right. Um, so just the basic demographics of Berlin, um, what we're looking at really right now for the town is that from year 2020 to year 2021, the town population grew from 3210 up to 3227. Um, the senior population has also grown um, from 952. And then most recent numbers that we have gotten from, um, from James Wheeler as of June 2021 is now we're officially over the thousand mark for seniors in town which is good news. Um, you know, we're happy to hear that there's more seniors for us to serve. In terms of the town budget and the council on aging budgets, what we're looking at is last year, the council budget was $59,078. And this was including expenses and wages. And that for this fiscal year, it's 66,260. Um, but when you look at it, comparing to what the overall town budget is, we're getting less than half of a percent of the budget to help you know cover the needs of a good chunk of town um, on your right you can see the age breakdown so what is important to know is that the population of town 50 and over is now officially at 51 percent and as you can see also for the years um, age gap from 30 to 49 
you know, they're also going to be at 21%. So as we're looking at the council going forward, as well as continued services for now, you can see that the population in Berlin is continuing to age in place. So it's something again for you guys to be aware of. Thank you, Mary. So right now, this is how our COVID funding is, I'm sorry, our COA funding is being spent. So right here in the blue here is the expenses. This equals out to $22,728. This includes the 12,625 that has been designated to the council in terms of its budget, but this also includes the formula grant and donations that we have received as well. The uh, formula grant numbers at this point are calculated by the state on the 2010 census numbers. So at that point in time, the town of Berlin had 712 seniors and the funding for the formula grant is $8,544 with the assumption of $12 a senior. Uh, I have reached out to Adam Frank. He is the uh, he is the head of the Executive Office of Elder Affairs regarding this, and they are awaiting census data for 2020, but it does look like at this point, this year's formula grant is still going to be using the old numbers. And when uh, doing just some basic calculations, it looks like the, uh, the current senior population that we have versus the funding that we're getting from the formula grant, there's a deficit of about $3,600 just there alone. Um, the donations that we had received last year was $1,544, so that is also included in expenses. Um, the COA does keep track of its uh, donations separately, but we do use the donations for various projects that we're going to be doing with, uh, within the, the town itself. Um, this uh, orange wage here is meant for part-time wages. At this point, uh, the part-time wages is for van drivers. Currently, right now, we have one driver, Miss Ginny, and we are looking to get another one. I'm still in the process of that. Um, I can All I can say is that I have nothing but thanks and respect to Ginny. She has stepped up big time to try to really help us get van services out there for our seniors and um, I mean, she is taking on a big undertaking and she continues to go above and beyond and we're trying to get her some additional support for that as needed. Um, so right now these wages are designated solely for the drivers um, and it's something that I think that we need to look into, uh, you know, expanding potentially in the future as well because I think the van driver position is highly underfunded. So just, again, something to keep in mind. And then this gray section here is my wages um, for 19 and a half hours a week. We do also have one senior tax write-off person um, who helps keep me informed when I can't be at the council. Um, she checks messages and she pretty much emails me daily when I'm not there, what's going on. She helps also out with van dispatching, helping track the senior tax write-off program as a whole for the town, as well as helping me out with the Powder House News and literally everything else I ask her to do. And again, she's also invaluable, just like Ginny, so. That's um, Peggy Sardell. Yes, Miss Peggy. So yeah. the two of them keep me at least attempt to keep me sane. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. So basically, what is the council currently offering? This is the long and the short of it. Um, transportation services, yoga. We are doing yoga in person and also virtually through Zoom. We're having success with both, which is why we're keeping both. We have Tai Chi classes every Tuesday. We have the uh, bi-monthly powder house news. We have a smattering of durable medical equipment. Um, we're doing basically wellness and check-in calls as well to various seniors. Any webinars and info sessions. We had a session a few weeks ago with Mass General talking about their new location in Westboro that's gonna be built. Uh, we had an info session two weeks ago with Metro West Home Care. Um, and we've got a couple other ones scheduled. Um, we have one at the end of the month with Fallon Summit as well, just to talk about um, you know, wellness and self-care. Um, we are resuming the uh, blood pressure checks with the Neshoba Boards of Health. It was done prior to COVID at the church. Um, so we're happy that that's now resuming. It's gonna be once monthly at the very least. We're gonna see if we can get them twice monthly uh, to do one, event at the council room itself and then potentially one at Northbrook. Um, the Neshoba Boards of Health, the Fire and the Police Department, along with myself, are now doing something called a triad. So the way that the triads work is that we meet and the 
the goal is for us to address any unmet need of the seniors in town. Um, Tamara Bedard from the Neshoba Board of Health pitched the idea to us and we were all completely on board. And it really is good to hear the feedback from everybody else as well, because it's, it's allowing us to understand where are the lags currently in our town, where are we, I don't want to say failing our seniors, but where do we need the improvement? Um, you know, we've talking about trying to get, you know, COVID um, information more directly dispersed out to people. And then, you know, my points are also just making sure that we can get, um, you know, the services from the local ASAP agency, the aging services of Central Mass in to help out our seniors as well, because we're, we are having some issues with them. So, as a whole, we are doing triads once a month. And like I said, the goal is really just to look at things kind of in a community uh, light as to how we can best help out our seniors. Um, in addition to all of this, we're doing collabs with the Burnland seniors. Um, we're gonna be co-sponsoring their Teddy Roosevelt event at the end of the month. I think it's gonna be a good time. Um, we're doing the COVID funding home delivered meals. We've had two rounds of that. We're looking into potentially doing a third round with um, like a grab and go kind of setup. We're still in the process of looking that up. And then really um, doing any case management resources support, really anything else that the town, the town needs at this point. So this is the room. Um, it needs some love. Uh, you know, our goal is for us to continue doing some more um, activities in the room as well. But like I said, as you can see, we just, we need more storage and some love, but it's getting there. So thanks, Mary. So why do we need more funding? Well, it's, that's a good question. So, you know, I know the select board has been getting some, you know, goals and objectives from the residents in Berlin, um, particularly regarding uh, funding for its seniors. And, you know, our hope is that, you know, we, the Council on Aging can help kind of mitigate that potential gap that would be there. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, as you guys saw earlier, the senior population is expanding and, you know, once Highland Ridge is completed next year, there's a potential 66 more units of people along with any potential baby boomers who are aging in place in the town. Um, there is just an increase of service requests that are being asked. Um, I get calls frequently asking about, uh, you know, either having shine counseling, questions about um, getting additional arts and crafts or any type of activity in the town. Uh, we get asked sometimes to do things off hours. And again, we're just limited to what we can do right now. Um, and there's limitations to what I can do. Um, only they're 19 and a half hours and I have to really prioritize and triage what I can do uh, during my time to bet to best meet the needs of the seniors in town. Um, our hope is that we wanna to continue to do increased collaborations with other local entities like the Berlin Seniors, the Food Pantry, working with, you know, continued working with the emergency services and the Shobo Boards of Health. These entities are really good because again, they're gonna give us, you know, complete care of the seniors in town. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of ancillary senior services in place, such as, you know, the Aging Services of Central Mass, the Neshoba Boards of Health, um, the Neshoba Neighbors, 19 Carter, and the Berlin Seniors, but they can't replace what the COA is doing. You know, they are, they are really a good, you know, they are really a good um, option for people. They're a good complement to what is there, but they're only addressing part of a need while the Council on Aging is trying to look at the need as a whole, a comprehensive need of what it is that the seniors in town really, you know, really need out of their Council on Aging. And we know that there is really a, uh, a I guess a spectrum of seniors in town from those who are pretty self-sufficient and need services occasionally to those who, you know, are calling us, you know, every week for van rides, calling us, you know, asking about the food pantry, calling us, asking about different activities. So, you know, we, we understand that there is going to just be that, that um, spectrum that we have to also accommodate. 
Um, so just also looking to going forward is expecting my role for the town. Um, you know, again, we want to explore SHINE counseling. So for those of you who aren't aware, SHINE stands for the serving of the health insurance needs for everyone. So what this does is it's a nonprofit uh, and it uh, goes through the state. And what they do is they help people get information regarding health insurance and health insurance, whether it's enrolling in health insurance, whether it's giving people the different options to understand what their, what may be the best plans for them. Um, Shine counseling is huge, especially come open enrollment for Medicare, which is mid-October to the beginning of December. Um, so this is definitely a need. I get at least one call a week asking about Shine counseling or social security. And unfortunately, I don't have all of the up-to-date info myself. And I usually just direct them to Shine just because I want them to get what they need the fastest. Um, a lot of local council on agings, including Clinton, Northboro, they have Shine counselors that are part of their teams, whether they come in once a week or whether they're on staff full time. Um, that is just definitely something that I, I would like to pursue is, you know, myself getting certified for that to help be of need to the seniors in town. Um, you know, and also expanding to the mental health support for the town. Um, I am an independently licensed social worker for the state, and I have talked with the police and the fire chiefs, and they've mentioned that, you know, there is a need for mental health care in the town itself, that there are just some calls out there that it would be beneficial to have a social worker or have somebody with um, the mental health knowledge attending these calls as well. And this can even be too to help just providing some coping skills and just some emotion regulation skills, not only to the residents of town, but also too to the staff as well, especially for the first responders that, you know, are at high risk of burnout, just like the rest of us are. You know, we, I, my hope is that, you know, there would be a way to use my skills in more ways than one to really help not only just the residents in town, but also the workers as well. Um, we hope to do expanded check-ins for case management services, whether this is on phone or in person. Again, I've, come, I've gone by some of the senior houses. They've been happy to see me. Even just having a phone call every once in a while of a, hey, how's it going? Do you need anything? It's, it means the world to a lot of the people in town. But again, it just there's only so much I can do with my time. Um, we do want to be able to hold more services and expand our activity offerings, but we want to make sure too that we can have the capacity to do things either in person and virtually as well. Um, you know, again, we don't know what the future is going to hold, especially with COVID or any other, um, you know, incident upcoming. So we want to be sure that we can accommodate the needs of everybody in town safely. Um, so looking into more virtual ways as well. There are a lot of towns who are doing, you know, like Zoom bingo. There are towns that are doing um, like iPad or Kindle lending so that people can stay connected on the technology side of things so that they're safely connecting with people, but they're not risking any health issues. That's, again, something that's really important. You know, and also preparing and responding for any potential changes, again, like mentioning COVID. Um, I'm just thinking about, you know, COVID-19 boosters and potential shutdowns, as well as the flu clinics. It's coming. We're starting to deal with it. You know, I'm getting some updates from the Department of Public Health, but at this point, we're, like Margaret was saying, there's 11 cases in town and we're just waiting just to see kind of what happens with that. But um you know, I do suspect that we're going to start having a boom soon of people calling, requesting to get information for booster shots, especially since a lot of our seniors are, you know, in the highly comparable compromised range. Um, so again, that's just going to be something that, you know, we, I want to make sure that as a council on aging, we're there, we can prepare and we can support people in town best we can. And then finally, also looking at some potential, potential additional services at Northbrooks or the other uh, venues in town. Um, we did have a info session at Northbrook too, not too long ago, not too long ago. And, you know, for a lot of seniors in town that they can't get around and transportation really is the big uh, hurdle, sometimes being able to do, you know, different activities at different locations and meeting their needs. It, it is something that I think the council does need to focus more on. Um, and it is something that we've talked about a little bit um, and hoping to branch more so in this next fiscal year is just making sure that we can fully address what the needs are for our seniors in town. Um, so finally, uh, our hope 
you know, really looking for the future of Berlin is, you know, down the road, long term, you know, potentially getting our own space and our own senior center. There really is a lot of different activities we would like to do for the town. Um, at this point, we know that there's no community kitchen, so we can't do any kind of cooking or home delivered meals or anything like that. But, you know, that's something that, again, people have expressed interest in that may be beneficial. You know, we want to make sure that we can continue to expand support for all residents of Berlin. I mean, the council does focus on those who are 60 and over. However, you're never gonna be denied. Um, I take calls all the time from people who are under 60. We give rides to people who are under 60. We're never gonna say, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that. But this, it, there is a need though, because our focus is those 60 and older. There's just the need of you know, community referrals and just some additional case management and support for those also under 60. And we hope to have some increased collaboration within Berlin and the surrounding communities, you know, residents and officials. Um, you know, I think that having expanded COA services and having more notice and more recognition out there, I mean, I would love to do collaborations more so, you know, even like working with the schools or even doing some more work with some continued um, boards, committees within the town itself, as well as getting more of the residents involved. I think that we have in the past had a lot of uh, people wanting to volunteer or people calling in and saying, if you need anything, let us know. But I mean, obviously right now with the pandemic, that's been a bit of a challenge, but, you know, again, looking towards the future, we want to build up our uh, volunteer base and we want to just build up that collaboration with um, the residents as well as public officials in town. And then even potential to reaching out to surrounding communities, you know, like Boylston, Northboro, Marlboro, Hudson, and seeing what their councils on aging could offer and seeing if maybe there's a way for us to do any kind of um, collaborations, you know, with both of our councils as well, just to, again, get the information out there. Um, so that's just in a nutshell kind of what we're looking at. Um, finally, we're just looking at funding too. Um, this is really, really preliminary and it really needs to be fleshed out more. Um, so hence it being to be explored. Um, but that's something that Margaret and I have talked about and we're starting to really dive deep as to what our potential options might be for that. So like I said, in a nutshell, this is just kind of what we're, we're looking to do. Um, thank you, Mary. Um, so at this point, I did want to let the, um, I did want to let the select board know that, um, in preparation for tonight, I have looked up all the other cities and towns in the state and basically looked to see what, uh, other towns are offering in terms of council on aging senior centers. What are they looking at, you know, in terms of staffing and then what is their senior population as well? So that information is available to you guys as well, if you would like it. but I'm glad to take any questions. Very nice presentation, Victoria. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. You stole, you stole my report though, you took. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I, I, don't, I don't really have any questions right now. Um, anybody so, else? So Margaret, what are next steps? I mean, what can we do to support Victoria, because, you know, I mean, speaking for myself, I'm in one of those age brackets. Oh. Um, but, you know, the up and coming senior. Yay. Uh, yeah. I mean, wh where do we go from here? There's a definite need. You know, it's a definite ongoing, definite ongoing and growing need because we are mm -hmm. now seeing baby boomers hit, um, you know, that age mm -hmm. um, where they are where they are aging in place. Yep. Um, we're seeing that in the, in the data that, um, that Victoria showed. And I actually think this reflects on the community feedback that the board received mm -hmm. during your goals and objectives um, mm -hmm. workshop. Um, I think there's a, a broad recognition that with a growing number of seniors, service, sustainable services um, need to be provided. Um, as Victoria noted, it's really great having supplemental services provided by outside organizations and groups, um, but we really need to focus on core services. Uh, clearly, with an expansion of services, we are going to be looking at potential budget impacts. Um, and I, frankly, would like to hear from Council on Aging members, uh, Berlin seniors, um, and other residents about what they feel um, our steps should be toward expanding those services for our seniors. Um, 
another really important thing that Victoria noticed, noted was that um, with the various age groups in the senior in the senior category, there is a broad spectrum of interests. And so this is not just about um, conducting um, a, web, a webinar on, um, you know, on cybersecurity or something like that. This is trying to reach out broadly to a whole variety of, um, of individuals with different interests. So um, clearly, I mean, we'll, we'd have to address the budget um, the budget issue, um, and then programming and things. I would really love to hear. Um, I think the board should hear from the Council on Aging and the Berlin Seniors with their ideas as well, um, as far as what we could provide. If you if you just let me one one more thing. I, I know COVID is highly unusual, and I hope to God it doesn't happen in the next hundred years. But Victoria was invaluable to the Board of Health and to public safety uh, during COVID. I mean, she not only organized the meals distribution, which could become a regular thing with an expansion of the program, she took people to COVID vaccine appointments. Um, she did wellness checks and all in support of the Board of Health's um, mission and jurisdiction. So I just wanna thank Victoria again for everything she did um, in, in that regard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to call on both Scott. So Scott Hawkins, former finance and Scott Schultz, who is lurking in the audience, if that's him, um, from a finance perspective, what do we need to do or how do we need to present this information to finance to potentially get some more funds for them? I mean, less than 1%. I'm going to say it <coughs> because we are all thinking it. That's sad. <laughs> There's other words that come to mind, but sad will be politically correct. Right. This is um, this is often where sorry to cut you off, but often when we're looking at the budgets and people focus too much on sort of the percentage change from year to year, is that Council of Aging could double their budget and still be less of the increase we're going to probably have to pay for health coverage. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, and and that uh, I am having a bigger appreciation, not just where we've done this, the Council of Aging, where we've done this in other areas across the town, where we've limited them to no increase at all because we have a harder time controlling uh, runaway health care costs, runaway uh, retirement costs, uh, the schools going up by three and five percent. Uh, th that's, you know, uh, retirement health insurance and schools are like 60 percent of our budget. Um, and I think we need to find a way to put some of our, our interest in controlling those so we have the money to do the things that really matter most to the, the residents, where I think if we pulled people in town and said, hey, would you pay 10 bucks more a year on your, your property taxes so the Council of Aging could provide you know, twice as much services to, to seniors who need it in town, I think universally we'd find yeses to that. Yeah. Yeah. Other Scott, I don't want to put you on the spot, other Scott, but, um, you know, I saw you there and I figured, you know, again, from a current finance point of view, because uh, you know that we're coming, <laughs> we're coming for you. Um, can, can you hear me? Yes. It's, it's actually Karen, not Scott. Oh, I'm, hey, Karen. Karen. I'm, sorry. I'm trying to figure out how, why it says Scott, he's not here. That's okay. All right. No, I'm no so worries. Okay. Oh, Mary's waving. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, Victoria, I, I don't speak for Scott and Chris and, and anybody else, but um, yeah, obviously whatever I can do to help, you know, I'm, I would be more than happy to support um, you and make any type of argument to assist. So, you know, maybe the board needs to step away at one of our meetings and we just get a brainstorm and throw things against the wall and figure out what sticks and what's our best argument and what we can do to help out Victoria in her position and help out the seniors in town and everybody, you know, the Ginnies, the Bob Blairs, the Peggy Sardells and everyone else in the audience who's helping out, um, how we can get them the support that they need. One of the things I would suggest is getting the getting the the information that you just shared with us, Victoria, out to others. Okay. And it somehow uh, I'm not quite sure how, but um, or there may be I'm sure there's multiple ways to get it out, but I think it's important for people to see that information on your PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I mean, is there anybody in the audience? I, I know that there's multiple folks out there. Um, you know, I want to invite you at this time. If you have anything, just put up your hand. We'll, you know, bring you to the front. Um, you know, don't feel like you have to. I just didn't know if there's something burning 
that you wanted to, to share with us. Ah, oh, here comes Laurie. Hi, Laurie. Hi. How are you? Good, how, how are, are you? Laurie? Good. Um, it's just amazing how much Victoria has done this past year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You imagine how much more she could do if she was full time. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, that's pretty much it. She's been, done an amazing job. Well, we are very lucky and very blessed to have uh, to have her on our team. So, you know, thank you, Victoria, and thank you, everybody, for uh, doing all that you can to take care of the current seniors in town and those of us who are right around the corner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks, Laurie. Thank you. Bob Blair has his hand up. Greetings, Mr. Blair. You take yourself off mute. Oh. Bob, I think you're still on mute. Mary, can you unmute him? There you go. Oh. Oh. You both did it at the same time. He's back in mute. There you go. There you go. Hi, Bob. Hi. Um, I enjoy the presentation. Uh, by Victoria, and I fully agree that we need to up our game in terms of providing services to seniors in town. Um, I think having a full-time director certainly is one way to address that, and uh, as Victoria has noted, she already is stretched trying to do the programs we have now, would like to do more. And one of the ways to do that is to uh, increase her hours and the budget. Am I still on? I'm getting yep. weird. Yep, yep, yep. No, we hear, we hear you, Bob. OK, the other thing I would like to see in conjunction with uh, increasing the COA's budget is um, an exploration of how the various groups in town who provide services for seniors can work together, mm -hmm. not competitively, but cooperatively uh, in meeting seniors' needs. And I think maybe we need to convene a, a uh, session where everybody puts their heads together and decides who can offer what without replicating and uh, how we can move forward in increasing cooperatively, increasing the services to Berlin seniors. That's what I was wondering. I mean, do we know if St. Joseph's does anything for their, you know, congregation or First Parish Church? That might be a first start. You've got, you know, a pretty healthy population in both uh, both churches. Yeah, and you have 19 Carter. Mm -hmm. and the Shoba Neighbors is coming online. You've got yep. uh, uh, Berlin Seniors who are working cooperative, cooperatively with the COA now. Um, producing programs, entertainment programs, and informational programs. Um, we're out of First Parish Church at the moment, in uh, that is Berlin Seniors, in terms of uh, doing the monthly meals with programs, but that's something we can bring, somehow can bring back, I guess, if we had a, a venue where we could do that, provide the meals, which involves a kitchen and warming ovens and so forth, that would be a nice thing to be able to bring back. COVID notwithstanding, obviously COVID's going to put wrinkles in any plans about uh, gatherings, but I would just like to see uh, everybody put their heads together and come up with a plan that works. Margaret, is there anything that we could do with 1870? Is that a working kitchen where it's not really no. utilized? No, it is not a work, it is not a working kitchen. Um, not well, it is not a kitchen where you can prepare foods. Uh, okay. Only foods are allowed to be warmed um, there. Um, okay. To Bob's point, Louise, uh, thank you for waiting. Um, mm -hmm. To Bob's point about um, working collaboratively, um, when we had the small uh, neighborhood meeting over at the 1870 with 19 Carter, we actually did talk a little bit 
about, well, it's, it's my hope uh, that we could uh, begin to partner with 19 Carter Recreation Committee, Council on Aging and Berlin Seniors to actually be able to host more programs at the South Commons, uh, more music events and things like that. So um, Bob's point is well taken. Um, collaboration is also going to go a long way um, in addition to firming up Council on Aging programming. Louise, thank you for waiting. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. I, I'm just amazed at how much um, Victoria uh, accomplished in the past year. I mean, the list of things that she did was just unbelievable, I think. And one thing that I, I would like to thank her for is how she helped a lot of the seniors here in town get vaccinated. She put a lot of time and effort into mm -hmm. doing that. And I also want to thank her for her willingness and her support with the Berlin Senior Citizens. My pleasure. Absolutely. Good. And I, <laughs> one more thing. I really do feel that we need a senior center or at least a designated space because, you know, we could do things at 19 Carter. We can do things at the town hall. We can do things when they, first parish is back uh, in use, but you can't count on it as on a regular basis, you know? And like, we, you know, you can meet at 19 Carter, but you have to card in, like say, if you wanted to get, have a craft group, you have to bring everything to 19 Carter and then bring it back home again. You know, there's no place where you can go in and, and work on something like a lot of the other senior centers have. So those are just my thoughts. Okay, we appreciate that. All right, any any other comments? Scott, Chris, Margaret, anyone from the audience? It's just good to hear uh, suggestions from people. And this Absolutely. is a good time to start getting the word out, like I said before the um, spring town meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so Margaret, it's some not so distant future, you and I can chat and throw something up on an upcoming agenda for the board. Yes, yes. Um, and in fact, um, with respect to personnel, you're gonna be talking about something later on uh, with a workshop. I think that we really should include this in our workshop um, uh, because it's incumbent upon us um, to, look at, um, to look at services we provide and the quality of those services and um, how many services we can provide to our seniors, our, all of our residents. Agreed. All right. Well, Victoria, Louise, Bob, anybody else in the audience, thank you so much for, for coming. And uh, I think you schooled us all, Victoria, you know, realizing uh, the numbers in town and the impact and uh, what really needs to happen. So thank you for the very much eye-opening uh, information you provided. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. You betcha. Thank Take you, care, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. That's a great presentation. Thank you again. Oh, yeah. So... Onward we go uh, under old business. So first up is to review and discuss the fire marshal's suggestions and comments on the mobile food vendor policy and mobile food vendor application that I know is in our folder. So um, Peg, I, I asked, I recommend that the board hold this item uh, to give local reviewers additional time to provide their feedback on the application. We had hoped to have all the feedback on the policy prior to the board's adoption. We received some feedback after um, the adoption. So that needs to be, um, that needs to be modified a bit, uh, but I wanna be sure that we are 100% clear and, um, and up to date on the application before the board votes it. So I'm asking to hold that tonight. All right, um, any idea when, if? Uh, my hope is next Monday. Okay, all right, yeah. we'll, talk on, we'll talk on Thursday. All right, um, so Scott's favorite discussion is next up, uh, special town meeting continued discussion. Well, my fair, because I wanted to make sure we set something before we got to <laughs> Isn't it today? We're talking about opening up the warrant. Is it today? September 20th. A couple weeks. Okay. But, but you did want to keep discussing it in preparation for doing that so that folks would have advance notice and it wouldn't be sprung upon them. Right. 
All right, so uh, I closed the tab. <clears throat> Has anything uh, changed from the last time we discussed this, Margaret? One additional item um, to date, and that is on the Senior Veterans Tax Workoff Program. Uh, there does have to be an amendment. Now, this amendment does not have to happen at a fall special town meeting. It could happen at the annual, um, but the number of hours um, that are set in in our uh, program policy and procedures uh, need to be reduced because we've had multiple increases to the minimum wage rate. So the number of hours decreases based on the $1,500 threshold um, that, uh, that uh, seniors and veterans can earn under the program. So we need to remove the reference to number of hours and instead um, put a dollar threshold or, or something to that effect. But um, keeping the number of hours in there is not going to continue working with increases in the minimum wage. Okay, good. So we have not taken a vote to say that we're going to have a special town meeting on November 8th at 7 p.m., uh, have we? Not yet, nope. So could we take that vote without opening the warrants so that we can like adopt the, the draft timeline that you have so that we can officially say we're going to be having a special town meeting on November 8th? You could certainly do that. Um, once you do that, we cannot turn back articles that are requested. Um, so you're, you're, you're announcing the town meeting warrant. Um, if we had a citizen petition come in tomorrow for the next town meeting, it would not wait until the warrant is open, just to be clear. You know, so if you're going to announce it tonight, you're not necessarily waiting until the 20th to open the warrant. Which is fine. I'm just because I yep. I want to give people because we're only going to have officially the warrant is only going to be open for a week, and I would like anybody who uh, has stuff they have they they basically put them on notice. They really 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 should start planning. So mm -hmm. then, because what tends to happen is that when we close the warrant, we have sort of placeholders and we spend the next three or four weeks trying mm -hmm. to track down the last details. Mm -hmm. And for people mm -hmm. who are like planning their schedules and looking for childcare and transportation. You know, I, the more time we give them that we're going to actually have the town meeting, even mm -hmm. if we still have to work on details like where, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I just, I'd like to get people as much of notice as we can. Yeah. Uh, how does everybody feel when they look at the list? Um, does it look like it's merits having a town meeting? Just asking, Scott and Peg. I'd definitely say Yes, um, especially for the CPA. Uh, people yes. are out there, they, they want to do it. There's projects probably in line. I know that CPA had a meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, to kick that off. So I don't, right. I don't think that we can wait a year to um, get busy on that. Well, right. it would just be till May. Correct. Right, but I also think that doing some of these things uh, removes it from the main meeting. So the main meeting yeah. is less likely to hit three nights or it could be done in two or one. I okay. think we have some bylaw things that have a subset of people who are really interested in um, and gets those off a, a, of a, a, what might already be a long town meeting. Um, I, I, you're right. I don't think anything on the list really absolutely positively the town will fall apart if we don't do it this fall. I think right. we're doing it to keep the pressure off of 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 the May meeting mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. get the CPA uh, funds started to fund because we started funding that thing several years ago. Correct. And there is a backlog of projects that are sort of shovel ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. And those projects, just like I was telling uh, Council on Aging in Victoria was, are things that, you know, they probably need to get the word out too. So mm -hmm. you know, it would be good too. Um, I just wanted to hear your take on it and, um, you know, I, I, I think I would be all in favor of doing it the November 8th meeting. Mm -hmm. I mean, capital planning might have some projects that, you know, are so obviously yeses and are not very large, uh, mm -hmm. like potentially the, uh, the tennis courts or the basketball courts mm -hmm. that, you know, if we get the money now, could start in the spring and actually be ready for a summer season to be used mm -hmm. as opposed to approved in May. And then the fun summer season, it's under construction. Right. Agreed. Okay. 
The Capital Planning Committee recently met with the chair of the Community Preservation Committee, uh, Tim Wheeler. Tim Wheeler filled in uh, Capital Planning Committee um, about their process. Now, the process timelines do not currently mesh under the Capital Planning Bylaw. Uh, capital Planning Bylaw really only contemplates a Springtown meeting. So the timelines aren't matched up, so that's something we'll have to look at later. But I believe the Capital Planning Committee is willing to modify uh, its review schedule to accommodate um, CPN. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're all in agreement that um, it's a go. How busy it is uh, remains to be seen, but there's definitely some items on there that do need to be discussed. And as Scott said, if we can reduce a two-nighter in May to a one-nighter, then, uh, you know, let's get it done. Okay. What? You're more than welcome to open the town meeting. You're well, more than welcome to open it tonight. This is just a, this is just a draft schedule. We can move up this the opening date to whatever today is, September 7th. September 7th, so if we open it today, Margaret, will we still uh, hold by your other dates? Yeah, the sure, will yes. Close on the 4th? Yes, that gives people a little bit of extra time. All right. Unless you wanna bump that up too. Yeah. I think if you put that up to September 27th, uh, that might get us, because if we have to mail it out to folks, if we can mail it more than a week before people actually have to be there, I think that would be great. All right, so you want to close it on September 27th, 5.30 p.m. Yep. yep. So then just move everybody up a week? Well, obviously, except for the, the town meeting itself, but. Is this going to cause a problem for capital planning or CPA? I, I have no, no problem with no. The, the, well, it is still, the 25th is still the deadline to post the warrant. We might still do it prior to that because mm -hmm. we still have to do it 14 days ahead. And if we happen to do it 21 days ahead, I'm sure no one is going to complain. Right. And so I would, the only date I would move forward right now is the closing of the warrant to September 27th. Okay. Capital then, planning, oh, capital right. planning committee is meeting twice before, um, before November 1st and an additional time before November 8th. So they have three meetings coming up before town meeting would happen. All right. So can I get a motion in a second, potentially to uh, uh, move up our opening? Yeah, I, I move that we open the warrant tonight. We close the warrant at 5.30 p.m. on uh, Monday, September 27th. Uh, and we, for a special town meeting to be held on November 8th at 7 p.m. Uh, obviously, there will be a few more details as we go, but uh, with the, I, I like the timeline we have. Second. All right, motion a second. I think we've had tons of discussion. Uh, Stone Eye. Hawkins Eye. Key five. Okay, and to clarify, so that's adoption of the calendar as amended, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Awesome. And if right. I'm making funny faces on screen, ignore me because Pepe Le Pew, I think, just let go in the window behind me. So I apologize if, <laughs> if I sit here a few times like this during the meeting. Just want to put that out there. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it burns. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear Lord. Okay. Is, right. What was the intended victim? I don't know. The two cats are in the house, so I don't know if it's like oh, a family of raccoons that spin around the yard or not, but <laughs> wow. Okay. Focus. All right. So next up is the uh, discussed arranging a joint workshop with our friends at personnel uh, and Margaret to talk about multiple vacancies, staffing needs, priority hires, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I, I put a recommendation into the board, um, added a few more, <laughs> added a few more stats regarding staffing levels and things of that nature. Um, and I just want to make clear that the listing of boards, committees, departments that I provided provided at the bottom is not necessarily in priority order, nor does it necessarily mean that staffing would be approved for everybody across the board in one year because we do have to we do have to plan um, uh, for manageable sustainable um, uh, cost uh, increases associated with staffing so I just want to make that clear okay. I did go through Margaret and um, uh, 
because uh, I was curious about when all these um, committees meet. And it seems like Tuesday and Wednesday nights are like your big hitters mm -hmm. for for our meeting for those meetings. And I had heard too that um, I don't know if you can add. Are they up there? Maybe assessors. You know, I heard in a couple of meetings that they're also looking. Oh, there's Sutarian. Hi, Sutarian. Um, that they're also looking for some potential uh, possible help. So might as well pop them on the list as well. Now, okay, okay. Um, assessors does have staff, um, office staff. So I would like okay. to check to see what the potential capacity is there in house already. Okay. All right, so Margaret, are you looking for a date? Um, well, this was for the board to discuss. Okay. Is anybody else hearing that? Okay. I agree, right. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I think it's a good idea to have, have this meeting. It's just a matter of scheduling when. Yep. Agreed. Uh, do we have it? Um, uh, should we have it at a board meeting? Should we have it at a personnel meeting? Or should we just pick a neutral night and have both committees um, meet? Personnel committee is very is very busy reviewing policies right now. <laughs> They're on a roll. <laughs> I would suggest either at a select board meeting or on an off night for both. All right. Scott, Chris, do you have a preference? How about if um, you and Margaret discuss it um, at agenda setting and see if there is a week when perhaps it's not too heavy and we could invite personnel to our meeting? Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. All right. Done. Okay. Uh, Sue, anything from the personnel side you can add? She's shaking her head. No. <laughs> there it is. There you um, are. No, just that we're aware of all these openings and different support that the town needs. Agreed. And I think we do need to sit down and come up with strategies as a group to present it to the town and FinCom and other groups. Mm -hmm. okay. so is is um, Monday a good night for you and Claire and Tom? Claire and I are pretty flexible. Tom, it just depends when he gets home from work um, and when he can join us. But yes, he may be a little late but he usually makes it. Okay. All right. Just curious. I want to make sure it was a good night for you all. We'll make sure we have to make sure that we schedule it at a time when we would expect Tom to be back and yeah. Right. And have his dinner. Okay. Well, Margaret, okay. we'll, Margaret, we'll pick a couple dates, you know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And we do have a meeting um, this week on Thursday, so we can discuss it too. Yeah, let us know uh, if you want to shoot us a, uh, an email and you know, let us know some dates. Margaret and I meet at one o'clock Thursday. So. Um, yes, I have to talk to you about that, though, later. I'm, I'm, yep. It might have to be tomorrow, Peg. Okay. <laughs> I might have to bump it up. <laughs> okay. Right. And our meeting isn't until Thursday night, so. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. We can't. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thank you for your support. Uh, Margaret and I will uh, pop out some dates and then we'll just go from there. So thank you. Thank you, Susan. Nice to see you. See you later. Have a good night, everybody. You too. All right. Uh, <laughs> next up, and this kind of came up last week or two weeks ago when we met regarding uh, board support, uh, an actual vote this time to reallocate the recreations $30,000 in cultural mitigation funds to be used towards the future recreation uh, or yeah, recreation court upgrades. And I didn't think that was technologically, if that's not the right word, possible and that the money by town meeting was put back into its original pool. Mm -hmm. We can't reallocate money on our own. It takes town meetings to reallocate money. No, no you can support the use of the $30,000 that was turned back from cultural mitigation back to the cultural mitigation funds for recreations repurposing. Isn't that what capital planning does is figure out the best use of dollars? That would be included on the capital request form. However, I believe it was the board uh, in the past that has vetted the request from the mitigation funds. 
yeah. there was a very extensive yeah. process. At this point, I just don't see the need for that process, given the funds were previously allocated to recreation and would be out and well would be proposed to be reallocated to I, recreation. I mean, if there was a if there was a warrant article sitting in front of me, I would gladly support it. I feel it's premature until there's a warrant article sitting in front of me to be proposed. Um, I think, and I, and I think I said that the last two times this has come up. Okay, so I wasn't here when cultural mitigation funds, um, you know, where there was a vying for these funds uh, back when, when different groups were vying for the funds. However, I believe that there was an application process, a vetting process by the board where the, where the approval or support to use the funds came from the board initially, correct? Yes. Okay, all right. And that's why I propose that the board support this to prevent any unnecessary vying for these funds later on. Sure, I mean, I still feel it's totally unnecessary, but I don't oppose it. I think it's a good use of the funds. I just feel weird that we're allocating money when that's typically other committees' jobs. And and the, the town is the one that allocated the monies back to the fund in the first place. And if there's a warrant article, I have, like we normally go through and decide if we're supporting warrant articles, there's not even a warrant article in front of us. I think this is a statement of support, uh, Scott, yeah. rather than an allocation of funds. Yeah. Um, and I would actually, um, not only the, when the tennis courts or whatever recreation is bringing forward, when it comes forward, um, I would look for, I guess, a recommendation from Margaret and, and finance committee on where, if this is not going to cover it, where the other parts of the funds would come from. That's a, that's a good question. So that's where the Capital Planning Committee comes in because on the capital request form, we do have, there's an entire section dedicated to the proposed use of funds. It includes mitigation, it includes CPA, it includes free cash and stabilization and various other categories of funds. So it would also be noted on the capital stabilization form, a uh, capital, uh, capital stabilization, capital request form. <laughs> I mean, I, I think we did, all three of us say at the last meeting that we were in support of this, mm -hmm. in support of, you know, the project that recreation is bringing forward, correct? Agreed. Agreed. I'm in support of the project. I, yep. This is why I don't know why I keep coming back without a warrant. Article. I'm waiting for a warrant article to vote on. Well, I'm, um, I, I don't, I do don't, I do agree with Margaret that I don't think we need to go through this whole process where you know, we'd say, oh, we have $30,000 in, in um, cultural mitigation. Who wants, right? Who wants uh, us to uh, apply I'm, for it? I'm not asking for that either. Okay. That's all I, that's all I was curious about, you know. There's a great project to improve the courts. How much is it going to cost? And let's figure out the best use of town resources to pay for it. Right. I mean, it could be that because that $30,000 has less restrictions on it than the CPA funds, that CPA is a better use of town funds for this project. Or there could be other funds out there, which I'm exploring. Yeah. Right. 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 And so, so as a says, whole, I want this pro I'd like to have this project happen. I'd like to know the total right. cost of the project. And I'd like to see where other requests we have so we can use the best monies that we have, the, that have the, for this project. And this might be the right one, but it feels premature to me. Margaret, I think that you have a, uh, for lack of a better word, a, you know, not like a, well, yeah, I mean, not like a true vote, you know, I, 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 but, you know, you've got three members of the board who understand that, you know, like the uh, Council on Aging Recreation has been severely underfunded for multiple, multiple years. And if there's an opportunity to do anything to help them, um, I'm behind it. But and I think everybody knows that. Okay. All right, uh, moving down. So this was one that kind of carried over from last week. Uh, I don't see Eloise in the audience, but not quite sure if we need her. Uh, this is to a vote, to a vote. Vote to approve, sign the Mass State, uh, Secretary of State certifications to re, uh, of request to remain a single precinct town um, following the 2020 US Census. And I know that there's data in that Eloise provided it like the day after we met. Mm -hmm. 
I recommend that the board sign um, this authorization. I'll make a motion to do so. Second. All right, motion and a second. Lots of discussion. Stone eye. Hawkins eye. Keith eye. There you go. Uh, all three required to sign it, Margaret, or? Three signatures, please. Okay. Mary, would you put that on the table tomorrow for the boards? Okay, thank you. All right, awesome. Ooh, signature. Signature. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> I know. Is, I'm, this will be not Scott. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not exactly down the street either. So. <laughs> no, I think we need to take a picture of Scott's uh, Scott's handwriting. Uh, handwriting is normally bad, but with a cast on the hand, I'm sure it is significantly worse. <laughs> well, either that or you could scan it in and send it to us. And we could sign and send it back. No, oh, you never mind. I don't think we have a scanner here. <laughs> no, no, we'll just head down there. Okay. All right. So next up, um, I know the conservation uh, and Carolyn's in the audience uh, had a bit of a snafu last week on Zoom. Oh, there she is. Hi, Carolyn. Um, where they were going to talk about the appointment of AJ Moses to uh, conservation with a term expiring next year. I know conservation is meeting uh, next Wednesday. So do we conditionally approve based on conservation's approval? Yes, yep, Margaret my recommendation that. was essentially that. Okay. Carolyn, um, now that you're like off mute, anything that you wanna say about um, AJ, what a good fit he'd be for the board, et cetera? I heartily recommend AJ. Uh, <laughs> I um, have worked with him on a couple of things. <laughs> He, on his own, went out and made new wood duck boxes for a Brewer Brook um, pond. And this winter when the pond was frozen, he went out there and he replaced them. He had some extras. We placed them in different places around town. Um, he is always using the trails and talking about different pro uh, programs that we could do using the trails. He uh, does work for the Sierra Club. He was also on um, it, where he lived in Minnesota. He was on the local version of the Conservation Commission for many years. So he comes to us with a lot of knowledge of conservation, not only um, from a resident standpoint, but also the um, government side of conservation. So I think he will be um, a huge asset and I don't think it'll take him very long to hit the ground running at all. Awesome. Um, um, Scott, Chris, any uh, questions, comments for Carolyn on AJ? Sounds like a, a great addition to conservation commission. Yes, it does. Um, and I, I don't know AJ real well, but I, I think he'd be a good fit at conservation. Absolutely. So I would, Andy's I, a really nice guy. Well, we like nice guys. <laughs> so, we like nice guys. That matters. Yes. <laughs> I would make a motion to appoint a conservation with the, um, I guess it's after conservation takes their vote. All right. That's mm -hmm. my motion. I will second. All right. Motion and a second. Thank you, Carolyn, for all the input. Stone eye. Hawkins eye. Keith eye. Here you right. go, Carolyn. And, and Peg, if, you, if you'd like to um, deal with um, Holly's uh, confirmation of appointment to the Earthworks Advisory Committee, you, you betcha. could do that now as well. So Carolyn, anything to say on Holly, who's going to step in and, and uh, help out the Earthworks folks? Um, so Holly has been an associate member for mm, at least a year, if not, uh, actually, probably going up close to two years um and with the recent openings that we've had has become a full member and has volunteered to be our representative for the earthworks board um so i highly recommend that as well all right scott chris questions comments so moved. that's good second <laughs> all right we got a second in a movement. Um, so Stone Eye. Hawkins Eye. Keith Eye. Congratulations, Carolyn. 
Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, guys. And we will vote. I'm going to try to coordinate it to so, so that AJ is um, attends the Zoom meeting, hopefully from the town offices, so that we can take a vote. He can get sworn in and then be part of the uh, the meeting. At first, Thanks. when I was talking about it, I'm like, oh yeah, he can just go down the hall and get sworn in. Well, that's not quite <laughs> the days. <laughs> no. Uh, so that's that's my hope is that we can coordinate that and he will be a full member as of the 15th. Awesome. Well, we're happy yes, to- Best uh, of good luck, Carolyn. Right, happy to Thank do you. our part. Thank you, Carolyn, we appreciate you. Thank you. Do you Thank guys you. need me to- Hang around for anything else? Mm. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think you're good to go. Unless you want to. Unless you want to. I may. Like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got right. HGTV on mute. I'm reading the subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank uh, you, Carolyn. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Good night. All right. Up next is the discussion of the winter seasonal driver position job description. You have the draft in your agenda packet. It has been approved by the personnel committee and it is up for board discussion and approval now. I, I thought it looked fine. Mm -hmm. I did. It has been put in the standardized format, just like the others. Right, and someone who had that job, if we had an opening in highway, would know about it to potentially apply for a promotion from a seasonal job to a permanent job, correct? They could. All right, so uh, any other further discussion is needed? Um, I, could, I could just make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. All right, motion and a second. Uh, Stone aye. Hawkins aye. Keith aye. There you go, Margaret. Thank you. You, you betcha. Uh, and then right behind it is the public safety admin assistant job description. Another one that has been approved by the personnel committee and is awaiting select board approval. This was just for your information. This was posted. Um, we, as of today, we received 83 uh, resumes, <laughs> primarily from Indeed, pri primarily from Indeed.com. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yep. The only edit I have on this one is in the very last paragraph, there's italicized language. It says agreement between the employers. It should read agreement between the employer and employee. That's the only change I have. <laughs> that sounds like a that sounds like a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Any other questions, Scott? Chris? No, that was good. No. So I move to to uh, approve this one too. All right, second. All right. Somebody's making some weird noise. Okay, uh, motion and a second. Um, Stone eye. Hawkins eye. Aye. All right, so there you go, Margaret. You're two for two. Uh, okay. Next up is the police chief job description. This was also approved by the personnel committee. Um, this is in standardized format. It also um, attempts to address the new police reform uh, laws in one of the bulleted items. Um, let's see. Uh, those are the biggest, those are the biggest changes from the prior job description, which was approved in 2000. That, that looks fine to me. Oh, the other thing was, um, it used to reference dispatch and has dispatch. Uh, now there's a bullet that references uh, participation as a member on the NVRDD operations board, so. Okay. Good. Motion to approve. Second. All right, Pepe came around again. All right, so uh, Stone Eye. Arkansas. Chief Eye. Okay. Three for, three for three, Margaret. And, Thank you. And last one up is the Cemetery Commission Special Employee, Special Municipal Employee Designation. So as I, uh, as I did in FY21, I'm recommending that the board vote to designate the cemetery commissioners um, 
as special municipal, uh, municipal employees under the conflict of interest law until June 30th, 2022. This will run the course of the uh, contract for cemetery superintendent and burial services. I think we pretty much beat this yeah. one. I was uh, going to say, this is ago. fine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, I make the motion to do so. Second. All right, motion in a second. Lots of discussion a couple weeks ago. Uh, Stone eye. Hawkins eye. Okay. Aye. There you go, Margaret. You are four for four. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we are up to board's questions and comments and liaison updates. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> um, uh, I think Victoria mentioned a lot of things that uh, went on at the last council and aging meeting. Um, they did have three members from the Neshoba neighbors come and just give a brief presentation um, on how they fill in the gaps um, for seniors. And uh, let's see, the Teddy Roosevelt um, presentation will be at the South Common. It's been re rescheduled to October 26th. And the Seacoast Stompers is indefinitely postponed. Um, they're gonna reactivate calls to seniors to find out their interest in numbering their homes. And their next meeting is September 28th at 4 p.m. Okay. Um, I also wanted to um, give um, some thanks to Margaret and those of the others the others that helped to put on uh, the employee appreciation last week. Um, I think it, I hopefully it was a good time for the employees to just take a break and um, have some good food and good conversation and play a few games. Um, and just to say that, you know, we do appreciate um, the employees at the town offices. Agreed. It was very much fun. Good food too. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm glad you all were able to make it. Yes. Thank you for finding the vendor. Um, they were yummy. Oh, Mary's waving. Oh, Bob's in the audience. Bob wants to talk. Bring him up. Just a quickie. The uh, Teddy Roosevelt program is September 26th. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I wrote down the wrong date then. I'm glad you were here. Yeah. I was oh, thinking sir. that was going to be a chilly one. <laughs> I I that would have been chilly. <laughs> yes. Way cool. I saw the signs around the rotary. It's nice. Yes. Thank you, Bob. Okie doke. Okay. All right, Mr. Hawkins. Uh, I'm good. Mm. All right. Okay. I have I have two pages. Shocking. I know. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I had to rewrite it. My notebook. I couldn't follow my notebook. I will go quickly. Um, Earthworks last week, unfortunately, there was no quorum. Um, ConCon, we all know about the snafu energy. Margaret, I don't know if you want to give a, did you hit on it in your TA report that we approved? Uh, I, I did in writing. I didn't, okay. didn't mention it, but if you want to, uh, it's in my TA okay. report. All right. Um, so old business, a couple weeks ago, I had sent around the July, August write-up for the item and the EDC energy volunteer also for the write-up. Any Comments, questions, I'll let them roll to uh, Jan for publishing. I think it looked fine. I, I did look back at it today. Okay, all right. Um, the Smithsonian, I know that Margaret had mentioned it. Um, there's a meeting tomorrow night. Margaret, did you get a um, response back from um, the boards that you invited? I know MJ is going to be there. I don't have confirmation from the others. I do hope the others can attend. So we'll at least have a cultural council rep. And I talked to, uh, um, I swapped emails with June Miller um, from Historical. So I know that she'll be there too. And That's actually uh, Bob, Library Bob had reached out to me while we were at lunch uh, yep. asking about it. So hopefully he will be there as well. Yeah, or, or one of his trustees. Yeah, that's yep. good. Is this uh, something that, um, say, for example, Scott or I could go to if we wanted to? I don't see why you wouldn't be able to sit in the audience, Chris, um, as long as there's no deliberation. So Trish Settles from CMRPC is going to facilitate the discussion. Um, 
And uh, so I don't see why you you can't um, you can't attend. And I could share the link with you. This is not a public meeting. This is a roundtable about the right. um, about the grant program. So okay, I just thought if I'm available, I'd like to listen in, see what more I could learn about it. Yeah, because the application, um, Jen, I can't remember. September twenty fourth. Correct. The application is due September 24th. So chugga chugga boom boom. We got to uh, we got to giddy up on this and make sure that it's in and then uh, we can figure out all the planning, but let's just get logistics and stuff out of the way for that. Um, reminder that there's a training on the open meeting law for us on Thursday at 630 via Zoom. Correct, Margaret? Yes, that's with uh, Labor Council and it's only the board. This is not a posted public meeting. This is a workshop. Training was, session, I should say. Yep. Um, there was something that had come in uh, for boards and commissions. Know your responsibilities. It is a Saturday, September 18th uh, training online, uh, 9 to 12 for a whopping $15. Topics covered fiduciary duties, responsibilities, open meeting law, public records law, managing successful meetings. So Chris Scott, I don't know if you got that as well. I did. Okay. All right. I'm not That's sure if I can go because it's my daughter's okay. birthday. Aww. But um, I, I was it just fifteen dollars and and it's virtual. Correct. I, I I've I've been to those before and they're very worthwhile. Okay. So I would encourage you if you'd like to go to go. Yeah, there's a, a online registration. So um, Margaret, I don't think I have anything on the calendar, so I can do that okay as long as it's not zoom and they see what i look like at nine o'clock on a saturday morning <laughs> um um so i noticed a bunch of emails and i don't know mary if you can pop in regal do we need to do anything with them there's like ongoing issues she's shaking her head we're good with them well i mean they're they're getting they just got everything they needed to get over to the abcc i just copy you so you see the fun Okay. All right. I was just checking just to make sure that there wasn't anything that we needed. They have to thrown do. the ball back into Boston. So they're, they've, okay. moved it, they've moved it forward. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Maplewood, Margaret, also lots of discussions. You had asked mm -hmm. for a select board member and or uh, Earthworks to potentially be involved in that. Is there anything? And which is it again? I'm sorry. Maplewood. And oh, Maplewood Farm? Yeah. Um, that is in DEP's hands right now. So we don't need to do anything? You don't need to do anything at this moment um, because uh, DEP can, uh, controls. They're the regulatory body that's controlling that issue. Okay. Um, old Fire Station, again, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. Margaret, I know that I had mentioned it to you. Did Richard, um, wonderful Mr. Hanks, did he do an inspection of that building? Is it leaking he tubs of water everywhere? Well, that I know, but I don't, I haven't, I don't think Richard has gone out there yet. I'm going to have to ask him to do that. Okay. And then the ADA grants. So over the weekend, I submitted three of them. Um, one for $9,025 for the handicap uh, parking signs and um, striping, $2,500 for the listening devices and round up $1,700 for the tactile signs. My concern, Margaret, is that you never received any confirmation that they went through. Do you want me no, to No, I, I will email my contact at MOD and, uh, and confirm that they received them. You should have received something. Honestly, this happened in last year's grant round, too. It's very frustrating. So I'll reach out to MOD and find out. Yeah, because what happens is that um, I have all the information ready. I go through the application, da, 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 da. There's like four um, documents, one that repeats multiple times that have to be uploaded. So you hit the upload button, it sits, it spins, and then the submit button gets you know lit. So you hit that and boom, it goes right back to a blank application. And I'm like, crap, did I time out with the 30 minutes? I don't yeah. know. I'll find out tomorrow, Peg. Okay. Yeah. So once you find out, then there's more coming. Um, I went through the grant and figured that I would just do it by uh, buildings so that we have the set amounts. So there's one for municipal buildings that will round up is like 8,600. Uh, oh, fire, police, and EMS. So there's a bunch of stuff. I had the opportunity to meet with Michael Wheeler and sat down with uh, 
Chief Clark via email. There's a bunch of stuff that FIRE can do um, that doesn't cost any money that they can help us get in compliance. Um, items like lowering coat hooks, items like moving chairs, getting them away from the doors um, type of thing. So the, he's putting a plan together to help us out with that. There's another 550 that I'll put in a grant for, for fire police, uh, an EMS. Um, you know, some of it needs like sink piping needs to be done. I figure that I can reach out to our uh, uh, Henry Wheeler and Mr. Roseberry to help out on some plumbing and electrical stuff. And then some town hall. Uh, Margaret, I didn't know who to talk to, if that's a you, if that's a historical, uh, you know, there's things like um, the railings, you know, need to be fixed. There's protruding objects. There's handles that turn the wrong way. That would be our facilities department. <laughs> it is. All right. Well, I mean, I could bring my screwdriver and hammer in, but, uh, and maybe a oh. cordless drill. <laughs> yeah. No, then you know what? Um, I'll put in, I'll put in one for that as well. So that's 3,600. So if these three went through uh, that I did over the weekend, then there'll be another uh, roundup 13,000 going through. So um, hopefully we're gonna look at a giant chunk of change coming our way that we can get stuff done around the town to make us um, ADA compliant. And that's all I got. Yay. All right, so uh, see where else on the agenda. So now we are down to, there is no need for an executive session, correct? So oh. I will entertain a motion to see you next week because we're back on a weekly schedule. Uh, so moved. For a All right. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you for tolerating my stinkiness of the outside neighborhood. Uh, Stone Eye. Hawkins Eye. Keith Eye. All right. This isn't this isn't smell o vision, thank goodness. Right. Oh uh, yeah, thank God it's not smell o vision. Right. Um, and don't forget to go down and sign the document for Margaret. So thank you so much, everyone. All right, thank you. Have a great night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.